Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Dell Inspiron 5000 series laptop. This exact one is a Dell Inspiron 5502 or 5509. The tagline number for this one is a C2N7763. And in this video I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can open it up and how you can clean up the fan, the heatsink and repaste your CPU. You should be doing your own servicing and cleaning once every year, year and a half, depending how often you use the laptop and the condition environment that you're using it. If you feel like yours is overheating and you just want to service it out, you can do it. This is not a benchmark or anything like that. This is just a regular routine servicing. And people are like always like, why don't you put after or before? This is not that. It's just like a simply doing a car oil change, servicing, maintenance. And I'll go over the tools that I'll be using and thermal paste that I'll be using. If you want to go for the best thermal paste possible, go with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme. These are one of the expensive ones, but these are the higher performance. But again, for this laptop, it's not necessary. For this model, you can go with an Arctic MX4 or MX6, which is a new one. These are really, really good too. All right. The second tool that I'll be using is a workshop towel. One sheet of the workshop towel. It's a a must, don't use a microfiber towel or anything like that. The reason is for the next tool. 99% or 98% isopropylic or isopropylic alcohol. And once we put an alcohol on the towel to clean the CPU, if there's a tiny capacitors on the components on the motherboard to clean, this will rip apart before ripping or damaging the component. That's why I always recommend using the microfiber towel. With this tool, and you need an opening tool and a screwdriver set. I'll be using an iFix screwdriver set as they have one of the best bits and screwdrivers out there. We are going to use a Phillips double zero and Phillips number one. If you get the pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers. If not, just grab yourself a guitar pick and metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and covers. Also a curved or a straight tweezer, it's good to have. We'll keep that in place. Just by replacing, uh, repasting, uh, cleaning your system, your hardware, you're not going to change anything in the system. Everything's going to be the same way that you left it. So don't worry about backing up or doing some configuration. All right, with all this on hand, we're going to get it started. First thing first, you want to power off the laptop completely. You want to flip it upside down and you're going to see a whole bunch of screws. We're going to remove all the screws except the two back in the corners. This one's right in here. We're not going to touch those. We're going to leave them. You're going to remove the one in the back mid, the sides, and the front row screws of the laptop. So go ahead and start from the back mid, remove those, and remove the rest of them, and keep them in a single pile, as they are all the same size and height. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helping you to your own servicing and cleaning, you can support this channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. I appreciate that. Alright, once we remove all the screws except this one, and the reason is that we left this one for the last is because these screws right in here, they have something called a C-lock. A C-lock is a C-shaped metal or plastic which is on the other side that will hold the screw from coming out and prevent it from coming out entirely. And it serves a purpose. As soon as I start screwing unscrewing this, you're gonna see a cover separating itself from the bottom case. That's the C-lock helping out to push the cover away. So you see that gap right there? That's what the C-lock is for. All right, once you feel the screw is making some click sounds and it's loosened up, you wanna move to the next corner. Do the same thing in here. A gap opens, and that's when you wanna stop. Now you can grab the guitar pick, the opening tool, and stick it about two or three millimeters inward, and just twist it. And you want to hear those click sound of the, what you want to hear on the front. And you see already it's open. Now you work yourself around. And the bottom cover should come out pretty easy. You can take it outside. Use a toothbrush to clean the, the dust mesh in here. Or wash it up. Leave it for drying. Whatever you like. And down here we can see the battery. The fan is kind of dirty. It's dusty. And then there's a dust over heat sink. Stuff like that. Before we do anything, we're gonna disconnect the battery. To disconnect the battery, you wanna put your fingers on the side of the jack, and you wanna pull the jack backward, the cable. And then you wanna leave it on top. 
for it. First thing first, we want to disconnect the fan cable. We don't want to pull on the ca cable, it's a fragile. You can put your fingers the same way that you remove the battery on the side of the jack connector and pull it backward, like that. Now, if you don't have your fingernails as short, you can grab it. That's why we have the tweezers. You can use the tweezers on the side of the jack and pull it backward, just like that. Right. Next, we want to switch to a Phillips number one. Bottom case was a Phillips double zero. The rest is Phillips one. We want to remove the four screws for the heatsink. They have a C lock again. You just want to loosen them up. And remove the two screws for the fan. There is a one there and one there, the short ones. You can lift up the fan. Take it outside, use a toothbrush, to old or new use toothbrush, and clean up the fan system. I'll put that to one side, put it right here. Now you can remove the heatsink, grabbing it from the nearest to the heatsink, and bring it up, and we can see the dust clog right in there. You can take it outside, blow air, and use a toothbrush to clean it. Now I'm going to take it outside and do some cleaning, the dust in here everywhere, and I'll be back. All right, now that we cleaned up the whole fan system, I took it outside and I cleaned it up nicely with a toothbrush. You don't need to put any water or alcohol on that one. So what we want to do here, we're going to put an alcohol on the towel and we're going to swipe over the CPU. Just remove as much as you can on the first pass, flip it inside out. Remember, this is not conductive. The alcohol is not conductive. That's why I always say use a 99%. Clean up both CPU dies. This is the CPU die, and this is called a PCH chip. Before the PCH chip, uh, some brands are separated from the CPU and they are in different location. In this model, it's on a single VGA chip. You want to clean up the heatsink too. A few wipes. And you're pretty much done. Do a dry part. Now you want to grab your thermal paste. You want to put a one tiny line on the main die and one drop on the secondary die. All right. Don't worry about it. Like, uh, he can spread and he can touch the comp in the PCB with no problem. Just like that. That's fine. You want to bring the heat sink down. Before we put the heatsink down, put the fan in there in place. There we go. Bring the heatsink down. Once you put it down, you want to put your finger in the middle. Just hold it. Don't don't push. And cross the screw the heatsink right in there. Always cross the screw so that way the thermal paste evenly spreads around the CPU crystal die. And put once you tighten up those screws, put the two screws for the fan. And most people usually forget to put the fan connector in. It's very important. Always focus on the fan connector, otherwise it's gonna shut down after a few minutes. And plug in all the way in. Pretty much we are almost done. And the uh, one last thing down here would be to just slide in straight the battery connector inside the jack and pinch them inside. Make sure the cable is running nicely between the battery. All right, we are almost done here. We're gonna grab the bottom cover that you already supposed to leak clean, bring it over, push down the corner, the front, make sure you hit those nice, big, loud clicks in the front end cover. Has to go right in there. On the side, don't push on the corners, on the back. First, you wanna switch to Phillips, double zero and you want to tighten up these screws right in there and then you want to push down and help it out same thing on the other side screw it down and push it down just remember when you want to power on the laptop it might take five to ten seconds to power on because we have disconnected the battery and or it might not so it all depends but we are going to power it on so you guys can see Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out to do your own service for your Dell Inspiron 5000 series, which is a 5502 model. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in the video comment. 
I'll try to insert them as soon as I can. And let's finish up putting up the last screw right here. And we're going to power it on. And it should power on with no problem. So let's go ahead. And this one turns on while once we flip the screen open because the BIOS is configured like that. Now you can clean up the key keyboards. And there we have the yeah, logo and it's loading up the windows. And that's it for today's video. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next video.